people are getting more and more worried and the market keeps going higher and higher and eventually there'll be some breaking point where um, we're going to see people say, well, I got to get in on this. And Hello everyone, Chris Vermulin, Chief Market Strategist of the TechnicalTraders.com, discusses the direction of the stock markets, as well as correction indicators to watch. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. I think the last time you and I talked uh, a month or so, almost two months ago, um, I was talking about how we want to see the stock market hit new all-time highs and we want to see it keep pushing up. And to me, that is going to be one of the final straws that is going to uh, probably kick the markets into a major top and we'll see some selling later this year. And that's pretty much exactly what we're starting to see. If, we were, if I was to just share my charts and we take a look at what the markets are doing, uh, they're still playing out very similar to uh, typical emotional trading in terms of if we take a look at the last week and a half on the right hand chart here, or sorry, the left hand chart, uh, this is the 30 minute chart of the SP 500 futures. This pink line is the 20 day moving average. And we keep seeing uh, waves of panic selling. We see an oversold market condition. This is when everybody is betting on falling prices. They're expecting the market to keep falling yet the market rallies and eventually we get into a FOMO state where everybody starts to pile in right near the top. And then what happens is suddenly the market will have a big gap down. We go into an oversold condition. People panic out of the market. And just as they start getting out of their positions and betting against it, we start to see the market take off. And it really keeps putting the active trader, the emotional trader who's going from FOMO of missing out to scared and they, they don't want to hold on to losers uh, the market loves to buck those trends. And if we take a look at the weekly chart here, uh, David, I've oh, I've got the weekly chart of the SP500 on the top. And this is a really interesting setup because we've seen this happen a couple of times. So more or less, the top chart is our weekly of the SP500 telling us when we're in a bullish phase. It tells us when we are in a bearish phase. We are currently back into another bullish phase and we've just broken to new all-time highs. And I've been talking about how we want to see new all-time highs on the SP500. To me, that's the most important index. And what happens at, at this point is, is going to be very um, important. And what I like to see once we've hit these new all-time highs, uh, because I do expect the market to have a major top this year and go into a start a big correction at some point, as we tend to see everybody start to pile into the stock market. Anybody who is short is starting to cover their shorts. People who missed out on the huge rally last year are now saying, well, the market is in an uptrend. It's at all time highs. I have to get in. They have FOMO that they're going to miss the next major move. And we're just starting to see that. And the Russell 2000 on the bottom uh, shows a really good signature of this where the market, the Russell can channel sideways. And then suddenly the stock market starts to rally and break away. And people start to move into small caps a bit. They, they rally up a little bit more. And then suddenly the market crashes and we see a huge correction. Same type of thing happened over here. We saw the uh, growth stocks, the average investor really piling in. And they really came into a halt here, February, March of 2021. And small caps really just went into a sideways channel while the broad market kept moving up. And then suddenly there was one final little squeeze where everybody piled in to the small caps, and then we went into a huge correction. And that leads us to where we are today, which is another big consolidation. We're just starting to see uh, small caps and growth stocks outperform. The ARK ETFs are doing very well. That's a good signature of what the short-term traders are doing. And of course, we are back up at all-time highs. And uh, just a couple of days ago, when we saw this huge gap down and massive panic selling, that was a distribution selling day, meaning the institutions, now that the general public is starting to move back into the market because they feel like they're missing out, um, the institutions are starting to unload shares and dump them into the hands of the average investor because they see, I think, the, the music coming to an end. So, you know, the big weekly chart I just showed you is very similar to the short term chart. It's just two different time frames of the same thing kind of working out. But uh, it's very interesting because we're, we're starting to see those signs, those early signs that the stock market, I think, is about to run out of steam now that it's made those these all-time highs. What is different this time than the last 
decade long bull rally is my question. Uh, I don't know. I mean, ev- everyone is always different. We're in a totally different type of economy. There's yeah. ev- everything is totally different. Every wave that we have. Now, this is this is what really separates what I do from most others out there. Is you know, I follow the trends. I'm a technical trader. So while I think the market is topping, and I, I think we see signs, and I do feel like we're just ready for a big uh, type of pullback. Um, I mean, we're long this market. I mean, we are screaming higher. Our our positions are up dramatically and we are long this market. If the market just keeps rallying, just like it did in 2013 and keeps going for a couple more years, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to be long this market. Our long-term investing signals are still long. We're bullish. Our short-term strategies, we're still long. Uh, so, you know, I, I do feel like we have gone through a major super cycle kind of bubble in terms of we've seen home prices just explode. We've seen... Um, uh, stock prices explode. Everything has just been, you know, squeezed higher into a bubble phase. And typically when everything is in a bubble and there's, you know, interest rates are low, uh, we usually go into a major super cycle. I believe we're going to be very similar to the 20, the 2000, 2001 market top where this could actually take several years to slowly unwind. We might have very weak pricing for a long time. Um, but I mean, we need to see, have the market prove that it's going to do that. Uh, but we are definitely in a bubble phase. I know, um, I, I believe we're already starting in a recession. Uh, but when you look at the recessionary numbers that the, you know, that the financial systems use, it doesn't really truly reflect where we are. You look at like overseas, they're already talking about they're in a recession, um, but they have different calculations for that. Whereas the numbers that we use in North America are all more or less fudged and they take out all the things that are important <laughs> that are true inflationary. Um, so I, I think we're very close to a big pullback and we're similar to just everything being way too expensive and, uh, businesses are starting to slow and we're starting to see people get laid off. And I think it's just a slow burn. It's just that momentum is coming mm-hmm. to a grinding halt, but people are still in kind of spending mode. People are still spending, but once they run out of money or that, or that all that spending kind of momentum stalls out, that's when things are going to dry up very, very quickly. Chris, are you looking for technical indicators or fundamental indicators before you take uh, some profits off your long position? Um, Or are you mainly just waiting for either a target level uh, or uh, a significant pullback? And so uh, you you, you Mm. want a correction to confirm that we're entering a new bear market. So what basically my question is, what are you waiting for to let you know that this correction is either already here or coming? Yeah. So for example, like here is our SPY chart on the left. This is our strategy chart. So we've already gone up and hit some of our targets. We're very close to a 15% target. And so we scale out as we hit these levels. And as we scale out, we put that money into a different uh, ETF. Uh, typically right now we're putting it into bill. So we collect daily interest. We we can squeeze an extra 30% out of the market uh, safely. And then sometimes we end up reloading into the markets. For example, we also have half of our portfolio along the NASDAQ. We hit our 15% target. We closed it out. The market was ended up generating a new buy signal. We've, we've already rallied up, hit our first target. And now we're just letting the NASDAQ and, and the indexes continue to mature. And what's really interesting is we're still seeing very similar type of sentiment moves in the market when we look at this right-hand chart. This is my uh, my custom sentiment chart. And when we get these red bars, when we are in a strong uptrend, a bull market phase, when we get these red bars, this is when in individual traders and investors are panicking. It means they're not only selling their positions, but a lot of them are actually betting against the market and they're buying inverse ETFs, they're buying put options. And what happens is when all these people hit this threshold, uh, I'm, I'm able to analyze that and be like, okay, most of the people have now bailed who are going to bail. And then the market takes off without these people. They start betting on it to go down. It takes off. We saw this couple um, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and we've already gone up and we we're already hit a target and we're moving higher. So we're still in a strong bull market. We keep getting these little waves of, of small pullbacks that scare enough people out of the market that it resets and it keeps going. And so from a short-term basis, this chart here, this type of analysis, when the market rolls over two, three, four percent, we'll be moving out of it and moving into something else. Could be the U.S. dollar ETF, which will go up as the stock market cracks. So this is a very sensitive kind of swing trading position strategy versus the one I showed you here, which is 
um, let me just pull up just the SP 500, you know, we could be in this still for several more months. And uh, from a technical standpoint, we do need to see price trade down, sure. correct far enough that it loses its momentum. The short-term trend turns down the long-term trend, but everything is based on technical analysis, intermarket analysis of what, where's money, where money is flowing between different commodities, currencies, uh, sectors even, and by using all those technicals of where that money is flowing, we can we can generate these bigger signals. So from a short-term standpoint, the other chart, we're long and we're more aggressive, we're active, so we don't hold during a drawdown. As an investor, if you're going to be kind of set it and forget it with bigger trends like this that can last a year or two, um, you do need to let it pull back. You do give back a good chunk of the gains because you do need to still give a major trend lots of room breathing space to wiggle and you don't want to get out until the trend is confirmed. So everything's still based on technicals, no fundamentals. I don't care what the fed or the news or, or anything like that is, it's just, we follow price and we want to know what, where the money is right. flowing in or out. Is it a bullish flow or a bearish flow? Uh, so that's how I go about analyzing the markets from an investor or active investor standpoint. Well, if we take a look at the VIX here, this is the daily chart. And just as you mentioned, on average, if you look at these moving averages or th this channel, higher highs, higher lows, that is an uptrend. Yeah, it's been moving up with the stock market. But as you know, David, the market climbs a wall of worry. People are getting more and more worried and the market keeps going higher and higher. And eventually there'll be some breaking point where um, we're going to see People say, well, I got to get in on this and we're probably going to see the VIX fall. We're going to see the stock market have one more big push and people get into the small caps and growth stocks. And that'll probably be like the blow off top in the stock market. So there could be still an explosive move, but this rising VIX and rising stock market is telling us, uh, I mean, we've seen this over and over again. Here we had a rising VIX and then eventually people realize that they just have to get in and they all pile in and, and the fear dissipates. We had it again over here. So um, you know, this typical price action, rising markets, rising VIX is simply people getting more and more nervous as it goes higher and higher. They're buying more and more leveraged inverse ETFs or put options until they hit the breaking point. Then they all have to cover and then they decide to get long and the VIX will fall. And it's just a, a, a kind of a repeating cycle. But this is just typical human kind of psychology of people worried uh, about falling prices and uh, they, they're fighting the trend. And if you fight the trend, you're screwed. In the long run, you're going to give all your money back at some point. Could be next year, could be 10, 20 years from now. If you don't manage your positions, you don't follow price, you will eventually give it all back. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is I, I deal with a lot of traders and investors who have been doing this for 20, 30 plus years. Right. And they're like, my account has pretty much stayed the same for the last 20 years. Or they'll go through massive roller coasters because they'll be on a winning streak. And then suddenly it only takes a couple bad trades or or one big trend against them and it wipes everything out and that's because you don't have position management risk management and you're you're obviously fighting the trend or you don't have a, a way to identify when the trend changes for you to get out and go find something else that's moving in a favor in a direction that you want thank you for watching the interview highlights of chris vermulin if you enjoy this highlight video Please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.